Welcome to the last lesson of form validation using JavaScript. Well, many people will argue that it's not safe to validate data using JavaScript. And this is why. It's because a user can disable JavaScript from their, their browser and for that reason they may bypass your the validation but in this case if a user disables JavaScript in my application the user will not be able to use this form because you cannot see the button unless you check that one the second thing you cannot submit this form if there are errors okay so if you disable JavaScript in this application then you will not be able to use this form so it's a security threat but also you have the power to make sure that the submission of this form depends on the use of JavaScript so this is how I handle that let's go back to the code where we left off so you see I added a button there the submit button but I made it type button instead of type submit this is why if you put it to be type submit the user will just submit but if it's type button it's just a normal button so for you to submit this form you will use javascript to submit the form so if the user has disabled the form you cannot be able to submit this form okay the next thing about this form is that still you cannot submit if there are errors okay you see now i'm clicking on the button it will not submit so i have to fill in this one if there are these errors you cannot submit I agree to terms only when these checks here and you have agreed to term can you submit this form you see it tried to submit to process the PHP but I have not yet created that file so you see that's how it's working so so back in the code we're going to use this ID as a variable and add an event listener to this button okay so we go back to the JavaScript. Remember, you're still adding it under the window having loaded. Okay. So we find some space there. The button. So we say the button dot add event listener. The event of click. The anonymous function the second argument and the use capture is going to be false as has been with most of our cases yeah so after the button has been clicked now we are going to submit the form remember we give the form an ID the cool form and that's what we are going to use here we're going to say the cool form dot submit now this is a method that you can apply on forms I guess I could say that now you see the submission of this form depends on JavaScript so the user will not be able to submit any data without JavaScript so let's save the file go back to the browser and refresh I agree to terms that's when the form will be submitted you see but we do not want them to submit like this in this case they have not filled in any data so they are submitting a wrong form 
form with no, with no data. So how are we going to handle that? This is how. Let's go back to the code. So the way we are going to handle that, the way I handle it is this way. First, I'm going to create a variable which is an JSON object which holds the errors. Okay. So for example, if the password does not meet this requirement, it, it saves an error in that JSON object. And this is a JSON object. So I'm going to put it at the top. I'm going to call it and it's going to be a JSON object like that. It's going to hold errors for the inputs. So for example, I'm going, I'm going to, uh, to assign them password. So when the document has loaded, because the password, okay, here you put a comma. When the document has loaded, because the password is not, does not have any value, it's going to hold an error, okay? Also for the username, comma. Also for the confirm password and for the email. What I'm saying here, when the document loads, because it loads, it loads without any data being filled in, all of this will have an error as the value, okay? Now, when the user is typing, it's still an error. So when gets validated to be correct, now we are going to use JavaScript to change this one into an empty string, okay? Now we're going to start with the username. So, when there's an error, the error log dot username is going to be error. Okay, there's an error. When it's, it gets validated, we turn it into an empty string. So when it is empty, when the load, when the page loads, it's an error. Okay. When it does not meet the requirement, it's still an error. But when it meets the requirements, it becomes an empty string. That way. But now we're changing it using JavaScript here. Okay. So I'm going to do the same for the email when it validates. We turn it to an empty string when it does not validate. Turn it to an error. Okay, the same for the confirm password, for the password, I mean, when it does not validate, it becomes an error. When it validates, not an error the same for confirm password when it does not validate when it validates it becomes an empty string after doing that 
instead of blindly submitting the form we are going to loop over this error log and if any of the values is error instead of an empty string we will not submit the form if all of them are, are empty strings we will submit it and that's how we are going to do it so instead of blindly submitting the form we are going to make sure that all the inputs are correct so that's how we are going to do it so we are going to, to run a for loop we are going to run the for i in for in loop Over i in error log. Before that, we are going to create a variable and call it and assign it the value of zero. So when we are looping here, if any of the values is not an empty string. This number will be increased. So this is how we're going to check it. If error log, when we pass this high there as the key, is not equal to an empty string, we can do it that way, or we can say is equals to error either way you're still getting the same thing if it's equals to error so we're going to increase this error number with one okay so after that now before submitting this form we are going to check if If error number if it is less than one we submit the form else in fact we don't need an else statement there but we can just say return but we did not need this one but you can still put it there so if values have an error in them it will submit if there are no errors if they are it will return false so that's it that's the end that's the last tutorial and i hope you have learned a lot of javascript there okay so let's check it so you see if they're not entered and do not submit do only submit when you have entered this data and there are no errors here like we did in the in the beginning so i hope you enjoyed we learned javascript and that's the end of this series